we got a crazy ass real estate market going on right now, right? So if you're into doing flips and you think you need to flip your house, you're wrong. Just do some things to your house and then sell it. Okay, like you just saw that giant check, right? By the way, that deal happened like in September. Why is it that everyone else makes 20 grand, they get a freaking check right away? I gotta wait like seven months to get mine. <laughs> what the hell's that all about? I'm gonna bring that up in tomorrow's meeting about investor schooling. All right. Uh, use a microphone, damn it. Straighten him out there, Debbie. It's a hard job. All right. I want to talk to you about a deal, what I call a clean and sweep, all right? You got buy and holds where you buy a house and you fix it up and you rent it out and you keep it, right? And you keep it for years. And then you got flips, right? Where you got to go in and fix every single thing so you can get top dollar for the house, all right? I want to talk to you about a halfway point between those two deals, what I call a clean and sweep. And I'm going to show you my most successful clean and sweep and what I did with it and how I did it. So you can see, scream to the world, all right? I'm always telling people that I buy houses. I actually bought t-shirts and I walked around with these t-shirts on for six months. I bought 10 t-shirts at $16 a piece, so $160. And I wore these t-shirts every single day until they practically disintegrated. My wife uh, did not like my fashion sense, but it, I was doing it to make money, right? So that the world knows what I do for a living. And um, sure enough, I got an insurance buddy. He owns an insurance company. I do some business with him. And we play poker together. And I wore these t-shirts to the poker games all the time. And he told a guy that he knows, oddly enough, the guy was in the mortgage business. And he, this is the house's address right here, 1151 Leeton Road in Philadelphia, PA. I grew up in Bustleton, right? I actually lost my virginity like four blocks away from this house. <laughs> so, so when the owner said, do you know this area? I said, I know this area real well. I said, I was walking around here naked about 15 <laughs> years ago. I said, I know this area, man, better than most people, right? So this insurance guy finally calls me and he's talking the whole time and that just drives me crazy because I'm used to monopolizing the conversation. All right, that's usually my job. But it occurred to me halfway through the conversation, I should shut up and just listen because he's telling me everything that I need to know, right? He's saying to me, oh, I've got these wholesalers that are coming in here, they're offering me 60, 70, 80, 90,000. I told them all to go to hell. I'm not selling my family's house for this kind of money. So this guy's like, his, his father died a long time ago. His mother just recently died. This house was in complete disrepair. I'm going to show you some pictures of it in a minute. He is talking straight for like 45 minutes. And just by me shutting up, which isn't easy for me to do, but I did it. I did it because I realized he's telling me everything I need to know, right? He's mostly just bitching about wholesalers and how much they're offering them. And he's not going to do any business with anyone unless, unless they pay 100 grand for the house. So to make a little story short, I go, all right, cool, dude. Like, uh, I'll be there. I'll meet you at the property. So I go to this house, and I meet him at the property. We go for a tour of the house, and one of the first things he says to me is, so listen, uh, we got a little problem. My brother actually lives in this house, right? And he goes, I'm the executrix. I'm going to sell it to you, maybe if you give me the right number, but you can't tell my brother that you sold the house. I'm like, so what do you mean? Like, he's still going to be living there? <laughs> he's like, look, I know my brother. He, he has a tendency to be violent. He goes, please, just don't tell him, OK? <laughs> he goes, I'm just going to sell the house to you, and then we'll tell him later. <laughs> 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 OK. Uh, I mean, look, the bottom line was I want the deal, all right? I want the deal. So you know, if I have some problems with his brother, I mean, you know. There's always a price to pay for, for doing a deal. OK. He goes, oh, by the way, he's, he's very capable of violence, so be careful. I'm like, OK, thanks, dude. You know? So we go, to a, we go to a Dunkin' Donuts to talk about buying this house. This is what the house looked like the day I drove up to it. OK? You couldn't even see the freaking house, right? 
And the outside was actually the well cared for part of the house. Okay, inside was the worst hoarder's house I've ever been in. There was three feet to four feet of trash inside this house, in every inch of this house. There was a dead squirrel in the kitchen, right, who was laid out like this in the kitchen. And it looked like he had been taxidermied, you know, <laughs> because there was nothing inside of him, just the exterior skin. And I thought to myself, well, how long did the flies float around this kitchen until the maggots ate the guts out of this poor squirrel? Like, pretty bad. Uh, a bunch of other stuff. We're, 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 I'll, sh I'll show you some pictures so you can see. <laughs> this is what the outside of the house looked like, right? Absolute insanity. If you look at the front door, there's all these twigs, right? Yeah. These these were like roots of these bushes that had grown outside of the dirt and built almost like an impenetrable wall where you couldn't even get to the freaking front door. And then I grabbed the handle of the front door, and of course it was broken, and I'm bleeding already before I even walked in this house. I'm like, this is like the devil's house. I mean, I'm freaking <laughs> bleeding already. I just freaking got here like a minute ago, right? Right? So. We go to the Dunkin' Donuts, we talk about, I bring my two-page agreement of sale. Uh, I had a business partner who did this deal with me. He comes with me, and we're sitting at this uh, Dunkin' Donuts, and we're talking about the deal, and the guy is talking the whole time, just like he was on the phone, and he says, I need you guys to close on this house in seven days. And I'm like, okay, um, I've been in the business for 32 years, uh, it's pretty freaking hard to get a title company to close a deal in seven days. It might be a little bit longer. He looks at my business partner, don't even understand why he looked at him, and he said, he said, if you can't close this deal in seven days, I'm going to kill your kids. What? And, Whoa. right, like just out of the blue, like insane <laughs> shit, right? And my, my business partner is like a super mild-mannered, never been in a fight in his life kind of guy. And he starts getting really upset. And I just go over and go, look, look, you should just like leave. I'll talk to this guy, <laughs> right? <laughs> and he, he's, he got upset. He walks out of the meeting. I get the thing under contract, right? For what do you think I got it under contract for? 100 grand. He made it very obvious, OK? And I grew up in this neighborhood, like I told you, right? My parents, my parents still own a house in this neighborhood. And I know what their house is worth because I've spoken to them about it, right? So, and uh, I've run comps on my parents' house from time to time. So I know what their house is worth. I know this neighborhood is worth 300, 325,000, maybe a little higher. Back in, this was a couple of years ago I did this deal, right? So, um, basically what happens is I don't get the deal closed in seven days because I just can't. I just couldn't do it, right? So it went like 11 or 12 days. He was super freaking pissed. He, <laughs> he never went near the guy's kids. He starts uh, calling me up, calling me names and everything else. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I said, I just blamed it on a title company because, you know, what do you want me to do? Yeah. What am I going to do? Call up the title company and flip over some desks and they're going to freaking settle your house tomorrow? <laughs> just, just deal with it, dude. Right? So that's what I told him. This, this, it's hard to believe, but these pictures represent wow. lots of things being cleaned up before I even took the pictures. Okay, I couldn't even walk in the house. Okay, like I, I wanted to get like those snowshoes you use, li like where you got tennis rackets underneath your feet, so I could walk on top of the trash. But it, 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 you know, I didn't have those, so there wasn't much I can do. The, the, everywhere he. In the toilet downstairs, he had like a, a box of those Home Depot heavy-duty trash bags, and he would put the trash bag in the toilet, use the bathroom, I guess like tie it up, and then untie it when he needed it. That's what he did. That's what this brother did. So I had no doubt that his brother was violent, because in the, in the hoarder's trash, on top, well, first of all, there were hundreds of empty cigar boxes, you know, like 
Some of them were pretty cool, like, like he'd spent real money on, on high quality cigar boxes. Because some of them I'm like, shit, man, I should like, you know, bring this home. I can put my, my credit cards in or something, you know, something cool like to put inside your safe. But I also saw knives and bats and, and, and weapons all over the freaking house, right? There were so many knives in there. I still have like six of them. I, I, one time I did this presentation, I actually brought the knives. <laughs> and I said, here, pass this, pass this around, you know? <laughs> uh, but this house was just insane amounts of hoarder's trash. Now, you're probably thinking, you know, I've walked in houses with realtors before and they go, oh my God, uh, how do people live like this? And I've heard that so many times from inexperienced people and just like, shut the hell up. Don't you understand? The more screwed up a house is, the better the opportunity for you to get that house cheap. You want the house to be a mess, okay? You don't necessarily want to be able to see the sun from inside the house, <laughs> which has happened to me. But Hooters, tr let's face it, Hooters stuff, it's great. It looks like a disaster, right? It's just trash. Hire some people, can find some young bucks to go in there and fill up a damn dumpster. And okay, so the dumpsters are expensive. I was using 40 yard dumpsters. We had to go through four of them just so we could walk inside the house again, all right? This is some other pictures. Look at the kitchen. They had cereal boxes on top of the refrigerator. That's probably the only food that he was actually eating because you couldn't go in here there were, like I said, there were dead squirrels in the kitchen, right? So the, the, everything was just a complete, total, utter mess. Um, <laughs> the shovels are there. You see the shovels in this picture? They were there to get rid of the hoarder's trash because it was like, y y you just couldn't even pick it all up. So we brought the trash cans from the outside into the house, filled them up, took them outside, threw them in a dumpster, throw shit out the second floor of the house. And it just gets, gets weirder and weirder as you keep going. Uh, this was like as we're getting closer to being able to see what the house looks like. <laughs> but, I mean, best I could tell, it didn't have any structural damage. It was just a house that needed a total rehab, right? It needed to be gutted because it had a lot of paneling and stuff in it, but not everywhere. Some of it had, you know, sheet rock. So these houses were built like 1969s. 1969, 1972 range, all right? So I buy the house, okay? The first thing I do <coughs> is I hire a bunch of tree guys to cut down all that crap growing all around the outside of the house, right? So on a Saturday afternoon, I got the dumpster arrives. I got a couple of brothers who were looking to make some spare cash. So I said, well, good, why don't you come on down to this house? I'll pay you for the day. Help me get all this crap into the dumpster. So my brothers are, are there early in the morning. They're filling up the dumpster. The tree guys are there. And it's a real hot summer day. So these tree guys, they're all like built like, uh, you know, uh, like they're uh, male dancers in a nude show, all right? These guys are all like muscular. They're, they got chainsaws. They got axes, all kinds of shit. All of a sudden, this crazy guy shows up, starts climbing in a dumpster, screaming and yelling, pulling things out of the dumpster. It's the brother, <laughs> right? And considering I had seen all the weapons and everything he had, I just decided the smart move is just call the cops, right? So I called the police. Philadelphia police actually showed up in like 15 minutes. Two women, and I'm thinking, I don't know how this is going to work out. Like, you know, he's in a dumpster. He's screaming and yelling. He's taking things out of the dumpster that I just paid to get put in the dumpster. These two women cops started yelling at him. Next thing I know, they're grabbing him. They dragged him out of the top of the dumpster, and they beat him up a little bit. Wow. <laughs> this whole thing was this one very exciting real estate deal for me, right? <laughs> Right? So I told you about the knives and the cigar boxes. One of the things that made this deal incredibly weird is as we started to get rid of the hoarder's trash, there were things three feet underneath the trash. Things from the generation I grew up in. 
like games like Othello, right? <laughs> and I thought to myself, like, yeah, yeah, there's the game, there's the red, the black chips and the white chips, stuff like that. I said, what happened? Did somebody drop the game in 1972 <laughs> and then trash just accumulated on top of it and nobody ever, but they've been looking for the game ever since? <laughs> How did these things get there? There were, there were newspapers from the 1970s. There were baseball cards. Like, I would have picked them up, but, the, you know, in this house, you didn't want to be taking nothing home with you anyway, right? <laughs> All right? Five 40-yard dumpsters is what it took. Uh, the neighbors were all over this house. Oh, that house has structural damage. I said, yeah, okay, uh, you're a structural engineer? No, but the so-and-so, so-and-so told me. I said, well, would, you know, would you like these, have you ever seen these houses in Bustledon? Once you see the house, you, you understand. The foundation is like three foot thick foundation of solid concrete. You, a nuclear bomb could go off. The <laughs> foundation of this house is gonna be fine. I grew up in one of these houses, so I know what they look like. This is what it looked like after I got all the trees cut down. That's the same house, right? You yeah, you can't even see the driveway, which is on the right-hand side of the house, because it's like all just covered in vegetation. So what did it really do here, if you think about this? $2,000 to have these macho guys cut down all the trees take them all away, right? They didn't leave any lumber for two grand. They took all that crap and split, right? And I got to tell you, with the crazy ass brother there, I didn't mind having a bunch of uh, lumberjacks there to help me in case this guy got crazy, right? Then all the trash inside the house ultimately got into the dumpsters. So now people could see the outside of the house. They could see what kind of repairs need to be done. They can walk inside the house and actually have an opportunity to look at it, right? That's all I did to this house. That's all I did to this house. I spent a total of about maybe five grand, roughly about five grand. On the dumpsters, the dumpsters, I got them from Allied, so I was paying like 700, 800 a dumpster based on weight, five dumpsters, you know, and then the tree guys, right? Okay. So just look at this before and after picture, right? Just shows you like how crazy. There's no way, like if I tried to sell it the way it was with the trees, maybe I would have been offering them $60,000, right? But slight changes that you can make and all of a sudden the house is gonna be worth a lot of money, all right? One of the reasons I wanna do this presentation right now is because right now people will buy anything, okay? I got a house up to Poconos listed for, I bought it for $50,000. I am selling that house, right, it's going up for sale tomorrow for $120,000. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna get 120, but I think I'm gonna. There's nothing up there for sale, right? And all I did was, uh, I put a, sent a handyman over there to fix up a bunch of stuff. I, he didn't do any painting. I sent a carpet guy in there to just carpet the double wide trailer. It's a double wide trailer for 120 grand. Wow. I mean, awesome. But it's a house in a great development, right, by Lake Wall and Paul Pack. So if you're into sailboats, you might want to buy that house. <laughs> if you're into sailboats or water ski boats, which is what a real man would buy. Okay. So, what do I do next? I blast this house out to my list. I got a buyer's list, okay? If you're gonna be a wholesaler, or if you're gonna be anyone who's gonna be wheeling and dealing deals, you wanna have a buyer's list. So how do you build a buyer's list? Well, you stand in front of a bunch of people and you say, my buyer's list is called addictedtorealestate.com. Put your name and email address on my buyer's list, and when I blast out properties, you'll be the first to know about it. You and a couple thousand other people. But you'll be the first to know about it. If you're somebody who reads your email real quick, right, and you respond to it, hey, Phil, I'm interested in this deal. How do I get in it? I'll give it a lockbox code and let the games begin, okay? Everybody in here, if you're going to be serious about being a real estate investor, you should be building a buyer's list, all right? I could still take a property and blast it out on Facebook, but there are people who've opted into my list. If you've ever heard of Constant Contact or AWeber or MailChimp, all of these programs, 
you can build a buyer's list. So you need to get a website, right? I'm now in doing mobile home parks. So I have a buyer's list for my mobile home parks, but the website's not totally finished yet. So as soon as it's finished, I'll give you that address. All right, so let's talk about this. I put this house, I blasted out to my list first. You want to know why? Because people on my list, you're my people, right? If you're not on my list, okay, you're not going to know about this house until I put it up on the MLS. I am a realtor in the state of Pennsylvania. The minute I get a house under contract, after I blast it to my list first, wait a few days to see if any people I know, all right, people who are on my list who have bought from me before, call me up and say I want to buy that house, okay? I might make a deal with that person. But what I'm also allowed to do because my contract allows me and if you become a member of this school you get all of my contracts they're very valuable I have been tweaking those contracts for 30 years okay go see a lawyer and ask him to draft you one contract he'll probably charge you three grand at this school you get all the contracts that we use all right so I put it up on the MLS Larry offered me hundred and thirty five thousand without even seeing the property. I told him to go over and look at it. He went over to look at it, but the price just kept going up. Oh, I hate when that happens. <laughs> it ultimately sold for $173,000 in 38 days. Pretty freaking awesome. Minus the five grand I spent, I made $68,000 on a house I didn't even work on. Okay, my brothers emptied out all the trash. The l lumberjacks got rid of all the trees. I didn't fix anything else. I, I, I did get rid of the dead squirrel. I did put him in a dumpster, right? I'm not in a taxidermy or anything. I wasn't gonna make a little model of him, but I, I should have at least taken a picture of him. These are some of the numbers. I bought the house for 100 grand. I sold the house for 173,000. I made $68,000 off of a house in 38 days. This is something I wasn't even really there that much. I mean, I, I helped when I saw my brothers filling up the dumpsters. Come on, I got to help them. I got to lift shit and throw shit in the dumpster too, right? So I sold it to this guy for 173 grand. Now knowing that the houses there were selling for like 300 to 325, I thought there is no way this guy's going to make any money. But that's not really my business, right? My business is to do the best I can for me and my family. I'm the investor, okay? Well, this guy did an incredibly awesome job fixing up this house. He, I'm going to guess that he put another hundred grand into it, all right? So I'm, th I'm guessing, I don't know what he put into it. We weren't friends. I never even met the guy. I'm guessing he put a hundred grand into it based on the work that he did. He sold it for $365,000. And uh, let me show you some of the pictures. That's what the house looked like when he was finished with it, right? And, and it looks way better than that. This is what he did inside. Just, just gorgeous. This is like hard for me to even imagine that this is the house, right? Um, I personally don't like to do full-blown flips. I've done my share of them. I usually would do three year maybe is about the average of what I've done in my career. But I think that they come with a lot of risk, okay? You, if you're really good at it, you know how to do it, hey, more power to you. I don't really think that's my expertise. I'm pretty good at getting into someone's living room and getting them to agree to sell me the house. That's my strong suit, right? So I often sometimes just wholesale things because I like doing that. I know what part of the business I like to do. It's important that you know what part of the business you like to do and what you think you're good at. Because if you like doing it, you're going to be even better at it than you think you're going to be, right? So I like doing the sales part. I like talking to people on the phone. I like people. I use my humor to get people to like me. And I can get their houses under contract. That's what I'm really good at. And then going home and creating a blast. I get in my car, I'm already thinking, who can I sell this house to? Who buys houses in this neighborhood, right? And blast it out, put it on the MLS, blast it out to your list. It, it's fun for me, right? The kitchen, look at, look at this picture of the kitchen, dude. This guy brought in professional photographers. 
Look at the way the wood on the kitchen floor is mirrored in that beautiful stove. I mean, awesome pictures, awesome cabinets. Everything he did is just gorgeous. He built a deck out back. Um, you know, just a first-class job. The, he put in sliding glass doors so he could walk off that beautiful kitchen right outside. Um, just the vacuum lines on the carpets. I mean, it just looks cool. It looks like somebody really cared about this house. And whoever did this job, I don't even remember. To, I could look it up on the HUD, who bought it. But um, I should look it up on the HUD, who bought it, and call this freaking guy and sell him some more houses. That's what I should do. But the point is, in a normal real estate market, this really shouldn't work. It really shouldn't work. You shouldn't be able to just go in and clean out some trash and cut down some trees and sell a house for a bunch of money. But this was like three years ago, maybe even four years ago at this point. In today's market, I think you can do this with anything, with anything, dog houses, <laughs> mobile homes. Just, just get it, like go in and clean up the trash and put the thing up for sale. Everything is going to sell today. Everything, because there's no inventory. How long is that going to last for? I have no idea. I have no idea. I wish I knew. Probably when, this, when they finally stop with these stupid moratoriums on evictions and they allow landlords to kick people out, you're probably going to see a slew of foreclosures coming and there will be an awful lot of opportunity for all of us. And this kind of stuff is going to end. And I kind of hope it does. I would like the real estate market to go back to a more normal market. But I'm not complaining about the kind of money I'm making right now. So if you can find even one deal and you're going to rent it, push the rents to the moon. If you're going to sell it, push the price to the moon if you can. Because this is just that kind of market. And you can get away with that right now. right? Things will get better as more and more inventory becomes available. But if cities like Philadelphia, for example, aren't going to allow landlords to evict people, I guess the trend's going to continue for a while. So anybody got any questions? Somebody's asking, did I use private money or hard money for this? I just put up the cash. It was only 100 grand. Somebody else said, uh, what did the place smell like? Really? So when you resold it, you resold as is? Yeah, use a mic, please, but uh, so people online can hear you. Yeah, so when you resold that, that property, you sold uh, as is, you resold as is? All I did was have the guys cut down all the trees out front, right? All the bushes and everything, got rid of all of it. And I had my brothers empty all the trash into the dumpsters. When the last dumpster pulled away, the house went up for sale. I don't even think I waited that long. No, there were still dumpsters in the driveway. The last dumpster was still in the driveway when I put it up for sale. I stuck a sign on the lawn. I'm a realtor, so I went and listed my own house for sale. I bought it already, so I owned it. It's really not a wholesale deal. That's why I gave it a different name. I call it a clean and sweep. So what you want to do today is if you find a house where you can make some minor changes and gain a maximum effect, that's what you want to do. It's a hell of a lot easier than fixing up an entire house, going out and borrowing uh, the money to buy it, the money to fix it, taking some kind of swing loan and all that crap. Just take the easy route out and make some money. That's what I recommend. Okay. If evictions aren't being allowed and the property is currently tenant-occupied and non-paying, do you wholesale it and make it your buyer's problem? A lot of buyers will not buy a house that comes with a tenant who's not paying the rent. I will not do it. I currently have a house under contract right now in West Philadelphia, and the guy calls me up once every six weeks and says, when are you going to buy the house? I said, when are you going to get rid of the tenant? He says, I can't get rid of the tenant. I said, I can't buy your house. Get rid of the tenant, I'll buy your house. I do not want your headache tenant. 
I do not want that problem. I've had my share of headache tenants. I started in Philadelphia. I grew up in Bustleton, Tarsdale, and Taconi. I bought houses in Mayfair, Tarsdale, Parkwood, Morrell, South Philly, Port Richmond, Kensington, all over the damn place. I, I bought stuff everywhere. And when you get a tenant, it's a very painful thing. If they're not paying you the rent and they're messing up your house, it's not something you want to go through. So it's a problem, and I have had my share of it, and I don't want to live any more of that. And when the city started leaning, so that, for example, let's just, I'm not picking on you, Colin, not tonight. But Colin's my tenant, and he doesn't pay the gas bill. The city doesn't go after Colin. They go after me, right? And I'm in the Landlord Cooperation Program, whatever the hell that means. It takes you like half an hour to go to PGW's website and list your name as a cooperating landlord. It doesn't mean jack shit, okay? Because they're still going to stick the landlord with the bill. They also, the city also does redundant lien practices. So if you were buying all your houses, if Colin was buying, say Colin's a landlord in this scenario now, and he's buying all the properties in his name, if one of the properties he, his tenant wasn't paying the gas bill. The city, PGW, won't even tell Colin they're not paying the gas bill. And then when Colin goes to sell one of his five properties, the city will charge you for that gas bill. That's happened to me. I know that's how it works. That's why you got to use trust, especially in Philadelphia. You got to isolate each and every property, but that's a whole nother topic. Okay? So anyone want to, got any questions about real estate? Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. Okay. Wait, we have one back here. Deb? Could you use a mic, please? We'll get you one. No, my question was the, the, the um, rental, the memorial. I thought they were going to lift that, where you're allowed to now go to eviction. I don't think the mic's on. There you go. Is that on? Yep. Yeah. My question about the landlords, um, weren't they going to lift that in Philly? Isn't landlord court open now? I sold all my properties in Philly, so I'm really not going to end. Does anybody know? Yeah, they extended it to June or July, right? June, they extended it to June 31st. Oh, July 4th, because everything's going to be okay on July 4th. Of course. We'll be allowed to meet with our family members <laughs> yeah. in our backyard. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah. Woohoo! Oh. Until then, just come to a vet schooling. <laughs> Anybody else? Did we have another question? Was there somebody back here had a question? I was just going to ask, um, what, what was your best deal? What was? Oh, you missed that. This is the best. This was the best. This was the best short-term deal. How long? How long did it take you to make this? <laughs> uh, this was a house I found in Collegeville. I bought it for two hundred forty thousand dollars. <laughs> cleaned out a bunch of trash, fixed all the stuff that the UNO requirements needed, and sold the house for $410,000 on the MLS. I made $127,900, but Larry gypped me and only gave me $500. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. It was a great deal. Uh, hey, Joe, he asked a question. How long did it take you? How long did it take me for this house? Yeah. For that deal. Uh, four, four weeks, about 40 hours of work on my part. The drive time, actually, the house was 45 minutes away from where I lived. So every time I went there, it was like an hour and a half. It was some little rinky-dink hardware store I had to keep driving to, too, to f fix, the, fix the UNO stuff. But no big deal, no big deal. You know, about 40 hours of work, a bunch of time driving. But I got a convertible, so I put the top down and just <laughs> blast the music and cut people off. And my, <laughs> one of the things I do for fun is I try to get a couple of fingers, right? <laughs> so if you drive a car the way you should drive it, you should get at least one finger on a 45-minute drive. <laughs> Two would be pref preferable. Two. If you can get three, you're my hero. Okay? Have a little fun with it. See how many fingers you can get. Try it tomorrow. 
just, you know, just go for a ride, be aggressive, and if you can get like four fingers, we'll give you like one of these big checks. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, Mark. Do you think there's a big risk right now because every house is going up crazy, you know? Um, there was a house I wanted to buy in Florida back in November. Deal fell through. I could have made $50,000 in equity already if I got that house. Um, aren't we possibly in a bubble where this, <coughs> once all this COVID stuff lets up, you know, maybe it kind of stagnates? Well, I just don't think we're in a bubble because what's driving it is no inventory, right? So th it, there's just nothing. And people need, some people actually need a place to live. They don't have a house to live in. So they're bidding up crazy. I, I did a coaching appointment today with Sal. He was going to buy a house. It's next door to him. He put in an offer 20000 more than the house was even asking for. And he wasn't even close to being in the running. And then they rejected him on the grounds of it was, it's going to be a short sale, which I told him are really hard to do today because short sales are, <clears throat> I don't want to get into the short sale thing, but they're very, very hard to do right now because banks do not want to discount anything. Why would they? Prices are going through the roof, right? Sal was rejected on the grounds that he did not live a mile away from the house. You have to live at least a mile away from the house to do a short sale. I guess because the banks are worried that the person who's in foreclosure is making some kind of deal with their neighbor, right? And that's why the banks aren't allowing it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Who the hell knows? I, I mean, there's just no inventory, so I don't think that we're in a bubble. Y you know, you're able to sell things at a maximum price right now because there's nothing else for people to buy. If you're a construction guy and you want to be a professional flipper or a wholesaler, you need houses. If there are no houses, how are you going to earn a living, right? That's why I switched my wholesaling business, which I was primarily doing all the local Philadelphia area. I don't care. I go to Jersey. I go to Philly. I go Bucks, Montgomery, wherever the heck I got to go. I'll go there. Go to Quakertown. I'll go to all those places. I don't care. Um, but I'm just bored with it. And uh, there's other certain things about driving to all these random places that makes uh, business a little tricky because I don't possibly know the values of every single neighborhood everywhere. I decided to start focusing on Florida because that's where I'm going to be living anyway. So I already have a house down there. I already own a couple of mobile home parks down there. I've got investment properties down there. That's where I'm going to be living in the future. And so I might as well just buy things down there instead of up here. So that's my plan. It's just a change for me. I get bored with whatever I'm doing. Like I like to, I did short sales for a while, did wholesaling for a while, did flips for a while, did buy and hold for most of my life. At a certain point, just get bored. I want to try something different. So I just, now I'm doing mobile home parks. We'll see how long that lasts. I don't know, whatever it is, it is. But I'm always willing to come here and talk about it and share my stories with you guys. Thanks for listening tonight.